turn to this question of truth. It's very common for people to say there's no conflict between religion and science because they, they re relate to different subject matters. Okay, this is a lie. Religion and science both make claims about the way the world is. They make incompatible claims about the same reality, and they make these claims based on very different standards of evidence and modes of argument. It should be quite clear that there is a, a, a conflict, a perfect conflict, between demanding good evidence for what you believe and being satisfied with bad evidence or no evidence. So religion and science are in conflict because there's no way to disentangle religious and scientific truth claims. The, the, the claim that Jesus was born of a virgin, say, it, it's a central claim to Christianity. It is also a claim about biology. The claim that he rose from the dead and will re return to earth is a claim about history. It's a claim about the human survival of death. It's a claim apparently about, the, about human flight without the aid of technology. Jews, Christians, and Muslims, while they, while they disagree on many things, all agree that on the Day of Judgment, every person who has ever lived will be physically resurrected. Just which scientific laws does this violate? One's tempted to say all of them. It, if the basic claims of religion are true, science is so blind to this underlying reality, and the laws of nature are so susceptible to, spirit, to supernatural modification as to render the whole enterprise of science ridiculous. If, on the other hand, the basic claims of religion are false, most of the people on this planet are profoundly confused about the nature of reality and beset by quite irrational hopes and fears. And, and many people are, are simply wasting their lives and spreading delusion, often with tragic results. It seems to me no thinking person can be indifferent between this, the two sides of this dichotomy. Now, it's often imagined that non-believers like myself must be in principle closed to spiritual life. This is not true. There's no, you can have a deep spiritual and ethical life without lying to yourself or to your children about the nature of reality, without pretending to know things you do not know. There's nothing that prevents a non-believer from experiencing ecstasy and self-transcending love and rapture and awe. In fact, there's nothing that, believes, nothing that prevents a non-believer from going into a cave and practicing meditation for a year like a proper mystic. What, what non-believers don't tend to do is make unjustified and unjustifiable claims about the nature of the cosmos and about the divine origin of certain books on the basis of those experiences. That is a difference worth noticing. So I want to suggest to you that whatever is true about our circumstance, ethically and spiritually, can be discovered now and can, and, and can be talked about in language compatible with our growing scientific understanding of the world and of the human mind. Whatever discoveries are there to be made about how to maximize human well-being can be talked about in language that, that is not an outright affront to all that we've come to know in the last 2,000 years. And to subscribe to one of the, the Iron Age religions, like Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, is to, is to make the tacit claim that that is impossible, that there is, in fact, no way to understand our circumstance using the tools of, of, of our modern understanding of the world, that, that some measure of superstition is necessary, some measure of mythology, that we have to lie just this much. The point is, we can place our confidence only in human conversation. And the question is, do you want to place it in a 21st century conversation where we have all of the world's literature and learning available to us? Or do you want to place it in a, in a first century conversation or a seventh century conversation as preserved in, in one of our holy books? Thank you very much.